Welcome again to the Jesus Channel, and we welcome you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, soon to return. How did you guys sleep? Hope you guys had a restful night, a night where you had plenty of REM, plenty of deep sleep. Hope you guys are getting good sleep hygiene, making sure you guys are taking your vitamin D, getting plenty of sunshine and exercise, but above all, that you're taking your vitamin B, vitamins, it's vitamin Bible. You're taking all your antioxidants that come from the Holy Scriptures, which truly the Word of God is the bread of life. So we welcome you this morning. Good morning to you. And for those of you that are coming on board, yes, we have faithful Carl, special missionary to special places in the world. We welcome you this morning to the Christ Jesus Chapel and the Christ Jesus College and Seminary. This is a great time to subscribe, share, and click, and be part of the family of God sharing the gospel. Share this with your friends, your family, with everyone. It's time for us to really get into gear and teach the nations the gospel of the word of God. Amen. Welcome, Nora, another missionary from the Christ Jesus College. We welcome you this morning in the name of the Lord, and we ask those of you that are joining, joining us to Take this time to share. I'm going to ask Carl and Nora to share this link with at least five other people as quickly as you can and then say, Amen, double, double exclamation point. And um, Amen. Amen. Nothing like sharing the gospel. There's so many people around us that they're just yearning for the gospel of God. And you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. God wants to use you. God is using you. And God wants to use you more. I'm going to be asking our youth pastor, Tiger Joe, to text in a little prayer to get us started as we preach on the topic this morning, the gift, the gift. I'm wondering if uh, Tiger Joe is online and hopefully he can text in a little quick prayer so we can get started and make good use of our time this morning. So thankful for everyone's encouragement. So many emails are pouring in and we're so thankful to all the Bible scholars. We have now over 13 Bible scholars, 1,300 Bible scholars in our, in, our, in our college who are dedicated to learning the Word of God and serving, the God, serving our living God full-time. We're building an army for Jesus. We have a beautiful prayer here from Tiger Joe. It says, Dear God, our Father, we thank you. How good it is to have gratitude. We thank you for everything that you have provided for us, bless this day. Amen, amen. So we're gonna turn now to John chapter three. There's gonna be a lot of verses, because I think it's really best for scripture to speak for itself this morning. And so we're gonna read from John chapter three, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. So follow along as the Lord blesses us this day with the word of God. And may God richly bless you today and encourage you. For we all need encouragement. And the best possible encouragement is not from self-help, and from these crazy seminars or listening to the news or having an extra cup of coffee. It's turning to the Word of God, the living Word of God. So here we are, chapter 3, Gospel of John, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees, this was a rich ruler of the Pharisees. He was part of the council and his name is Nicodemus. Nicodemus means 
Nike means victory. Demas means people. He is he's victorious among the people. He's a mighty ruler. And he's one of the great rulers of the Jews. Verse 2, and the same came to Jesus by night. He was ashamed to come to Jesus during the day. But he was curious to know what Jesus was all about. And so Jesus made time. We need to make time ourselves for other people so they could hear the gospel. And Nicodemus decided to come at night hiding. He didn't want anyone to know that he was coming to Jesus. But Jesus opens his arms and says, come. And, and he says to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And notice here, he's not calling him Lord. He's calling him Rabbi. We know you're a great teacher, and we know that God is with you. And then Jesus now opens the, opens the door and reveals truth to him. And this is how you're going to learn how to preach the gospel. It's very important in these dark days, in these precarious days. This world is in a predicament. And if, you're, if, you, if you haven't been tuning into what's going on in the world, things are changing very rapidly. And, and Christians are either going to stand up or there's going to be a great apostasy, and we're going to find out who really is in love with Jesus. And Jesus says, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. You know, people don't like that word, but it's, it's a word that Jesus himself uses. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. If you're not born again, you could be a good person. You could be going to church. You could be giving your money away. You could even be a pastor. It doesn't matter what church you're in. You could be in another religion. You could be, you could be a very devout religious person. Unless you're born again, you cannot. It's impossible to see or enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? That's a fair that's a fair response. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? I mean he's being he's trying with his rational mind to understand what Jesus is talking about. And Jesus answers, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, which is, means baptism, there is a commandment for all Christians to be baptism. It's, it's, a, it's a funeral. The old the old Ramsey gets buried, and then you come out a brand new person out of the grave, resurrected with Christ. It's a public testimony that Jesus is your Lord, born of water and of the Spirit. A true Christian is not just a member of a church. A true Christian is born again, a new creation in Christ, because the Holy Spirit now comes inside and lives inside of you because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So unless you're born of water and of the Spirit, you cannot enter. So before you cannot see the kingdom of God, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. My friends, we want everyone to enter the kingdom of God if it's God's will. And here he is giving, this is, we're watching Jesus now present the gospels, not, not Paul or Peter or anybody else. So this is an excellent example for all of us how we should be presenting the gospel. If you're presenting the gospel in a watered-down way, then you're not following the example that Jesus is, is, is laying down here in a very simple fashion. Verse 6. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. There's a very clear line of demarcation. Humanism, liberalism, things that are made from technology, things that are made from men. Flesh breeds flesh, but only the Spirit can endow the Spirit unto you. Marvel not that I say this unto you. You must be born again. There are many churches today that are saying, you know what? You can be reformed. You can change your old habits and become a better person. That's not what Jesus is saying. You must 
have your old self die and you must be born again. Verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest a sound thereof, but cannot tell where it cometh and where it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. This is a mystery. Where the Holy Spirit comes from, where it goes, who it touches, it's happening on a daily, moment-by-moment -moment basis around the world. Muslims are dreaming about Jesus and waking up converting because they, they're, they're getting a divine revelation of Jesus. There are people in India who are having revelations and realizing that Jesus is the Messiah. The Father is, is calling out his predestined children to say, wake up, it's time to enter the family. The door of the ark is soon to be closed. Verse nine. Nicodemus answered and said, how can, the, how can these things be? You see, the human mind cannot understand this. These are mysteries of God that we have to accept by faith. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto him, Thou art a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? You see, here he was a great Pharisee, rich and powerful in the council, and he didn't understand what the Old Testament prophecies were predicting was going to happen. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify what we have seen and receive, and ye receive not our witness. Jesus is saying, look, I, can, I have come from heaven. I've seen this. I know how this this born-again process happens. I'm the author of the, the born-again process. I'm the one who is giving the Spirit. God is ordaining people to be born again. He's being very honest. Jesus is very unfiltered. But ye, ye, ye meaning the Pharisees, received not our witness. Now listen to this. If I had told you earthly things and you believed not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? You see... There's so much more that, to the spiritual life. There's so much more to the Christian life than we're, we're aware of. There is a, another dimension that we're going to. When we close our eyes and we go to be with the Lord, it is far more than we ever, ever imagined. Verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that hath come down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So the only person that ever came down from heaven, he came out to be the servant, and he's going to ascend and be coronated to be the king of kings and lord of lords, and God's going to give him all power and authority. That's the son of man. And now he gives the clue. This is very important because you're going to see this at the, at the end of our account here. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted. In the Old Testament, there were many people that disobeyed God, and God sent fiery serpents that were biting people, and people were dying left and right. Moses cried out and said, please have mercy on, on your children. And God said, I want you to make a brazen serpent and raise it up as a standard, and anyone who looks at it will be healed. But that doesn't make any sense. If you get bit by a snake, you need an antidote. You need medicine. There were people running off trying to find herbs to heal themselves, and they died. You know, you find man-made solutions, and you're going to die. Moses provided a God-given solution. Are you hearing me? God provided Moses a God-given solution. Look at this brazen serpent. I'm going to lift it up. All you got to do is look at it and have faith. And the poison of the snake is not going to kill you. doesn't make sense today, but that's how faith works. That's how, that's how the Holy Spirit works. We need to wake up as Christians and stop fooling around and giving the partial gospel. Verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, this is the great verse that we all know. We take it out of context. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How God gives and gives and gives. The Bible says, you know what? You as fathers, you know how to give good gifts. But I, the heavenly father, I give the greater gifts. I give the greatest gifts. And what did he give? He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. You know, it's not God's will to condemn the world. It's not God's will to send anyone to hell. It's not God's will that anyone's left out of the family of God. Everyone has free will. Everyone has to make a decision. And those decisions have consequences. You need to understand that each of our actions have consequences. If you call yourself a Christian and you're not loving your brothers and sisters, you're living in disobedience or you may not be a Christian. If you call yourself a Christian and you're not totally in love with the word of God and you're not denying yourself and carrying your cross and, and following Jesus, that's a very dubious sign. You can't have one foot in the world and one foot saying you're walking with Jesus. You know, like the neuron. The neuron is an all-or-one response. Jesus wants you to be either 100% for him or just forget about it. And there are many people today that are walking away from churches, walking away from worship, walking away from daily devotions, walking away from what's so-called uh, called Christianity today because maybe they were never Christians to begin with. Are you really a Christian today? Are you really in love with Jesus today? Have you been born again? Because look what it says here. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn. God did not send his son to condemn the world, but that through the that the world through him might be saved. That's the intent that God had. God opened the door for everyone to come in. Now listen to this, verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. If you believe in Jesus and that atoning work on the cross, then you're not condemned. And this is what's missing in a lot of gospel, so-called gospel messages today. But he that believeth not is condemned already. You don't have to wait. To, to the to the judgment throne. You don't have to wait until until we're we're in the next dimension of eternity to figure out if you've been judged or not. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ as Lord, if you don't believe in what he did on the cross as the only way to escape the penalty and the power of sin, you're you're condemned already. Remember, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just reading what the word of God says. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is it. And this is the condemnation. The light is come into the world. Jesus came into the world. Jesus came into the world. And he was the light. He was the author of the world. He was the creator of the world. He was the architect of the, of the heavens and the earth. He came into the world, but men loved darkness. We're living in a world today that men love darkness more than light. Men love lies more than light. Men love money more than Jesus. Men love cheating and, and betraying people and their selves and their pride and their arrogance and their way of life more than Jesus. Why? Hmm. It says here in verse 19, because their deeds are evil. They're so much in love with themselves. They're so much in love with the evil that they're doing. They're not willing to open up their hearts and allow the light of God to come in, into their hearts and change them. You see, it's not God that's condemning. It's people that are condemning themselves. Remember that. For everyone that does evil hateth the light. My friends, we are not to be friends with the world. We are not to be associated with the world. We are not to conform with the world. If you're trying to look like the world and smell like the world and sound like the world, then you've got a problem. John the Baptist did not look like anybody that, that, that was walking around in Jerusalem. 
And Jesus was not concerned about his clothing and how he looked and what other people thought about him. He was more concerned about pleasing the Father. As Christians, we should be focused and concerned about pleasing the Father. We're not here to live our lives trying to please others. A real Christian is concerned about pleasing the Father, being obedient to the Father, and, and being obedient to the will of the Father. For everyone that doeth e evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's why people don't want to hear the Bible. That's why people don't want to hear about Jesus. That's why people don't want to hear the gospel. That's why people today are so stubborn and so hardened because they've been hearing the gospel for years and years and decades. And they said, enough of Jesus. We want to live our life our own way. We want to have our own world, one world, one vision, a new world order. And we're going to do things our own way. We don't need Jesus to come back. We don't want him to be our king. We're glad that he was crucified. We're glad that he's dead. He hasn't shown up. We don't think he's going to come back again. We're going to do things our own way. My friends, if you don't think that's, that's the world today, then you're, you're really misunderstanding what's going on. The world today... The global cooperate, uh, corporations, the world governments, even many of the churches today are not living in line with the true gospel and the true eschatology of what Jesus is preaching about his return. But he that doeth truth, the real Christian that loves Jesus, who is doing the truth, he comes to the light that his deeds may be manifest that they are wrought by God. You know, it's not us doing the work. Christians, don't take the credit for what you do. Always give God all the glory. Give God all the thanks. Give God all the worship, because it's, it's He that's living with, within us. It's His Spirit that's living inside of us. Too many Christians are proud. Too many Christians are arrogant. Too many Christians are like, me, 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 I, I, I. It's time for us baby Christians to walk, to wake up and become mature Christians and learn to suffer for Christ and make a difference and not worry about our reputations. They will come when Jesus will say, I'm ashamed of you because when you were on earth, you were ashamed of me. Now, this person, Nicodemus, is a very interesting person. We're going to close on the story of Nicodemus. What happened to, Nic to Nicodemus? What happened to him? He had a very interesting encounter with Jesus. Well, if you go to John chapter 7, and to save time here, I'm going to paraphrase this. But in John chapter 7, if you, if you start from verse 32, you're going to see what happens. The Pharisees are really now ticked off at Jesus again. They're saying, you know, enough of Jesus. In you know, the world today, is the same way. Enough of Jesus. And they're saying, we're going to send our troops, our army from the temple, and we're going to go now arrest him. And Jesus, Jesus is crying out in the temple, if anyone is thirsty, come to me, and I'll give you abundant living waters. The living waters will be flowing out of your belly. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. My friends, when you are a Christian and you are experiencing the Holy Spirit in your life, it is the most tremendous, phenomenal experience you could ever imagine. It is the greatest adventure, the greatest odyssey, because God is dealing with you and he's changing you, and you're falling more and more in love with Jesus because you realize who he is and what he means to you and what he has prepared for you. The Pharisees send the army to arrest Jesus. The soldiers go in there, and they come back empty-handed. And the Pharisee said, what, you didn't arrest him? And, and the soldiers say, no man ever spoke like this. They couldn't do it. Can you imagine? They were ordered by the Pharisees, by the high council of the temple, go and arrest Jesus. And when they came to Jesus, they couldn't put a hand on him because no man could ever speak like him. 
And the Pharisees were going out of their mind. And Nicodemus says, do we judge a man before he's had a, before he's had an opportunity to express himself? Is that how our law works? You see, Nicodemus became born again that night. Nicodemus that night had a special appointment with Jesus, and Nicodemus accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Not just, not just as Savior, but as his Lord. And he's trying to stand up for Jesus. You know what? He's meek and timid. You know, and today, in today's world, this message is for those meek and timid Christians that are hiding. There's so many Christians that are hiding. They want to fit in. They don't want to stand out. They don't want to, they don't want to disrupt or make other people feel uncomfortable. But that's not how Christians are. If you're really a Christian, you're going to stand out. If you're really a Christian, it's going to be very obvious that you're a Christian. And the Pharisees said to him, what? Are you from Galilee? Don't you know that nothing, come, nothing good comes out of Galilee? Obviously, they did not understand the scriptures that Jesus was to come from Galilee. Now, we're going to close here in John 19. Nicodemus finally makes a decision. Nicodemus finally makes a decision to really stand up for Jesus. You know, on this particular day, everything goes wrong, or so it seems. They falsely arrest Jesus. Jesus goes through six horrible, fraudulent trials. Jesus is decimated. Jesus is pummeled. Jesus is, a, is, is abused. Jesus willingly gave himself. They didn't take him. Jesus sacrificed himself. And he is ridiculed. He is spit upon. He is buffeted. He is bruised. He is beaten. It's horrible. By the time he comes to Pilate, he's hamburger meat. And Pilate finds nothing wrong with Jesus. What evil has he done? And Pilate does everything he can to release Jesus. But it's God's will that the evilness of that world just shout out. There was just one big one. It was one shout from the world. Just get rid of this Jesus. Just crucify him. Despite the fact of all the beautiful things and all the miracles that he did for the entire world. Now Jesus is dead. Jesus dies a, a, a naked death on the cross. And there was darkness all over the earth. You know that historians record that that darkness over the earth covered the entire Roman Empire, even Greece, from 12 o'clock in the afternoon to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, God covered the earth with darkness because God could not look at that sin. He was punishing Jesus, and God could not tolerate looking at our sins. That's why the centurion sitting on the cross finally said, truly, this must be the Son of God. And so after Jesus dies, Nicodemus makes up his mind, I don't care anymore. I'm going to let everybody know. I'm going to let the Pharisees know. I'm going to let all of Jerusalem know. I'm going to let my family and friends know. Because you know what? Joseph of Arimathea was also on the council. He was a very rich man. And he went begging to Jesus. I mean, he went begging to Pilate and said, please, he's dead now. Please give me his body. And Pilate was surprised. He, is Jesus dead already? He sent his soldiers and he checked in and they said, yes, Jesus is dead. So he gave the body to Joseph of Arimathea. And Joseph of Arimathea had a very great, beautiful tomb prepared for himself. And as a gift, uh -huh, that's, the message of our, that's the message of our day today, the gift. As a gift, Joseph of Arimathea gave his tomb to Jesus. What is your gift to Jesus? And Nicodemus now was the hiding Jew. He was the fragile Jew. He was, 
He was the one that was hiding behind everybody. He didn't want everyone to know his faith. There are many Christians today that need to speak up. There's a lot of wrong things that are going on today, and you need to stand up and speak in love and strength and say, this is wrong. This is not biblical. This is what the Bible says. Many Christians are afraid, wrong, wrongfully so. And Nicodemus does something that's very unusual. Here, And we're coming to our close. It says here, John chapter 19, and after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus. He, he, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for the fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave, and he came, therefore, and he took the body of Jesus. What devotion. What love. What tender love to take care of the broken body of Jesus, the Son of God. That was the gift that Joseph of Arimathea gave. Now verse 39. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. That's about 75 pounds. Nicodemus, was, I, I don't know if you've been at the airport, but if you go to the airport today, you're allowed like 50 pounds to carry in your bag. That's pretty heavy. Nicodemus was carrying 70, 75 pounds of very precious myrrh and alloys. I'm sure as, a, as he was walking through the streets, everyone was smelling this aromatic, expensive perfume in the air, and they knew that Nicodemus was a disciple of Jesus. My friends, a time is coming that everyone needs to know who you really are. Verse 40, then they, meaning Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, then they took the body of Jesus, they wound it in linen, clothed it in spices, as the manner of the Jews to bury. You know, Jesus says that everyone will know that you are my disciples. Is it obvious that you're a Christian? Are you an aromatic gift to Jesus? Or are you a secret disciple of Jesus? You see, the gift of God has already been given. Now it's our turn to be, it's our turn to be the gift back to God. Paul says that we need to be living sacrifices, which is our reasonable service. Are you hiding? Are you hiding so that, you, that you're not spotted? Are you hiding so that you can avoid persecution? Are you hiding because you don't want to be controversial? Hmm. Jesus gave me everything. Jesus gave his all. And I'm trying my very best to do the same in my own little broken way. I want to do the same. Are you in love with Jesus? Are you born of the Spirit? Are you willing to carry your spices? Are you willing to carry your myrrh and aloe and let everyone know where you stand? Jesus is asking you to be the gift. He wants you to share the gospel with the world. And he wants you to be the gift. Jesus gave his life for us. And now it's time for us to give our lives back to Jesus. Oh, I pray that these words would, would encourage your heart, enlighten your mind. And I just want to share a word of exhortation. No matter what's going on in your life today, Jesus is Lord. No matter how confusing things are happening in the world today, God is on the throne. God is in control. There's nothing to be afraid of. No fear, no anxiety, no nervousness. Jesus is in control. And yes, things may get tougher, things may get darker, things may become more unpredictable, but we as Christians, the true Christians, the true believers, the true children of God, we're going to endure. And we're going to endure until the end because there's crowns waiting for us, there's victory waiting for us. I pray that God will open your eyes to truly accept Jesus and not be a, a secret disciple, 
but give your life as a gift to God. God bless you.